I'm Sergey Panov, and this is Violin Explained. Today's discussion is with Jim Kennedy, a businessman, former mayor, consultant, and New Jersey State Assemblyman. As musicians and artists, we spend most of our time working on our craft, but almost no time working on the business side of sharing our craft. One of Jim's notable achievements is creating economic and social development through the arts and entertainment. If you'd like to learn more about getting involved in festivals and social events at a local level, I think you will find this interview a wealth of knowledge of how cities and governance work, and how you can create your own opportunities to share your craft and build a stronger community. And now for my discussion with Jim Kennedy. Jim, thank you so much for taking the time to be here with us. I think of you as a man who creates opportunity. You've been a jeweler, a business owner, motorcycle and bicycle adventure rider. You've been a mayor, consultant, and currently you're the assemblyman for District 22 in the New Jersey Legislature. Where did the ability to create opportunity come from? Did you always have it, or is it something you developed throughout your life? I think I developed it throughout my life, but uh, I was always a pretty active kid. Grew up across the street from a river. <clears throat> that was our playground. So uh, we uh, had seven kids in our family, so it was great because your parents never knew where the middle child was, you know, and uh, I had a uh, interesting uh, backyard. It was a, a, you know, half a mile of river. What helped you to develop that ability to just, you know, uh, see something that could be created, see something that you could do? So aside from having um, a very active uh, uh, period of growing up, um, I don't know, you just go for stuff. Like, where does that come from? Well, a lot of it, you know, the, the truth of it is, be, coming from a large family is, is a big part of the story in the sense that, uh, you know, they always talk about the middle child, the forgotten one, you know, uh, with seven kids in the family, you know, uh, you always had an older brother that, uh, you know, you learned a lot from him, you know, mm. and then you had younger brother who uh, you got to pretend you were smarter than him you know and uh i think the dynamic of the family was kind of interesting i i I never gave it much thought until i got older uh you know even running for politics was something i was never really interested in doing it just kind of happened uh you know i was uh, i worked in a jewelry store when i was 16 years old and you know it was great to have your own job. We were <clears throat> paper boys before that, you know. And yeah. as Mott the Hoople, the famous rock group, said, all the young dudes uh, deliver the news. Um, you kind of honed in some of your personal skills on that. Um, tips were a big thing, particularly around the holiday season. And, you know, right. uh, putting the paper on the front porch at the right time of the year was more important than, you know, little, little, little tricks like that, that you, you learned along the way, along the path of life. And, um, you know, I, I, I really think being a paper boy had a lot to do with my, um, success as a mayor. Um, you know, it was interesting when I ran for mayor the first time, so many people would come up and say, oh, you were my paper boy. And they really weren't sure if it was my older brother or my younger brother, but it didn't matter. The name was the same. Yeah. And um, the name Kennedy was interesting, you know, had been a former president. And right, right. I remember going up to one off, one going door to door. I had a young 24-year-old campaign manager. This guy wanted to run me for mayor. I had no interest in doing this. I was a downtown businessman. Right. Worked in the jewelry store all those years. And uh, he thought I would be a good candidate and said, you should run for mayor. And he was Jim McGreevy, became the governor of New Jersey, wow. you know, and he was the first, he was the campaign manager. Wow. A young, young guy. And uh, the rest is history. I, I've been in the legislature for a long time. Uh, a lot of it was, you know, just common sense, things that you've done before. And, and uh, you know, there's not much that comes up in the legislature that you, you haven't touched in some way or another over the course of your 70 years on the planet. Right, right. Uh, Have you had your life plan of owning your own business and then, um, you know, traveling extensively through the country? Um, and then, you know, being involved in politics, is, is that something you envision uh, growing up or is that just kind of no. as you went through life? You I live in the world of happenstance, you know, it uh, I was, um, you know, it was interesting. I, I look back and I, I've thought about this before. <clears throat> I had um, 
It was a long time uh, before I actually learned how to properly read when I was a kid, you know, uh, that middle child, you, you just sort of like move along. And, uh, yep. you know, I had gone to a uh, Catholic school that, that um, uh, it was a different, different than the public school systems. And there were, there were right. some good things about it and there were some bad things about it. But, I, you know, it's all part of who shapes, it shapes who you are. And um, I, uh, I wouldn't change a minute of it. I, um, I was pretty outgoing. I had odd heroes during my uh, adolescence. I mean, my f- father drove him crazy a little bit, you know. Um, my dad was in the Navy for 23 years. He was wow. a Pearl Harbor survivor. And, you know, we grew up, you know, I remember at our wedding, two or, th- two or three different guys saying to me, you know, Jim, you realize I'm really not your uncle. I was just in the Navy with your dad, you know. Uncle Glenn wasn't my uncle. You yeah, know? yeah. And um, you know, it was just the the the, the way it was. It, uh, it was an interesting experience. Um, you know, uh, going through high school, I was a pretty consistent type of guy. I'd say I married my tenth grade first girlfriend. Well, not my first girlfriend, but my, you know, my first real girlfriend. Yeah. You know. And uh, we've been married for 40, going on 48 years this year. And oh. so, uh, I, 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 other than the Northern Star, I don't know that there's so much more on the face of the earth that's as consistent as I am. <laughs> gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Um, I have to ask, any relation to the famous Kennedy family or just the same name? The same name. Um, the same county in Ireland. Wow. And, and if you're, when we... Lori and I took our honeymoon on a 500-mile bicycle ride in wow. Ireland, of all places. Her father thought it was he was Irish. His name was Moore, and 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 um, you know we thought it would be a great uh, place. But um, County Down was you know uh, where we had gone, and our crest is the same crest as uh, as. Uh, the former presidents, wow. you know, but I don't know, you know, look at that. It's like the name Smith. So if you, you were talking to Fred Smith and asked him if he was related to Captain Smith, right. you know, he would probably have the same kind of answer. Gotcha. You know? Gotcha. So the world is rapidly changing and getting a job with great benefits and, um, you know, pension and, and all of that is becoming less and less a reality for a lot of people. Um, would you agree that to be successful today going forward, people really have to be a little bit of an entrepreneur and create their own opportunities to going forward and, you know, really be successful of whatever that means for them? Yeah. Um, would you agree that people really have to take a much more of a personal responsibility for... Well, you know, I think some of it hasn't changed, you know, uh it's a Jersey saying, I know a guy who knows a guy, you know, um, a lot of people's trajectory is interesting. They, you know, they go through the process and many attend college and universities and, but wind up doing something totally unrelated to what they were thought they were going to be. You know, the old adage, what are you going to, what do you want to do when you grow up? Mm. You know, it's, um, it's kind of a silly question in a way. It's mm. it's in many cases it's you plan uh, work your plan and plan your work as former Governor McGreevy used to father used to say, uh, but um, often it's a case of happenstance. You know th- okay. things uh, fall in front of you that you were unexpected and you take a change and you, sometimes you just do what you like. You know. Gotcha. And, Gotcha. Any advice for, um, I guess, being ready for that change? I guess just be ready, keep your eyes open, yeah, right? You keep be your flexible. eyes on the road and your hands upon the wheel. <laughs> Everything I learned was in rock and roll. <laughs> <laughs> gotcha, gotcha. Um, one, of, one of your biggest accomplishments, and I know areas of expertise, is social and economic development through mm-hmm. the arts, um, you know, music, art, entertainment. Um, where did you develop that stance and mm-hmm. what led you to that view that uh, mm-hmm. a way to develop uh, a yeah. lot of local economies is through arts? Yeah. Well, in my semi-retired life after being a jeweler for all those years, um, uh, a consultant became an interesting concept. And, and part of that was 
was um, timing and luck. Um, it really arrived when, uh, you know, as I mentioned, uh, Jim was our campaign manager and then became the governor. When, when Jim became the governor, I, I was amazed that, you know, uh, a consulting company hired me and, hmm. And um, State Street Partners was the name of it out of Princeton. Uh, I mean, out of uh, Trenton. And uh, two great guys gave me a great opportunity. And, you know, we would go on these interviews and, you know, it would amaze me because people would say, well, I want to hear. And they would refer to me as the mayor. And at that point, you know, they want to hear what the mayor has to say, you know. And, um, I, you know, it, I was kind of befuddled by it, it because it seemed silly to me that I'm sitting at, you know, a, a major corporation. Uh, I, I laugh. I tell the story about we were uh, we went to one building in New York that hired me. They called. It was a cold call. They called me up and said they'd like to talk to me about an opportunity. And they had initials. Um, it, it was uh, UBS Wahlberg at, at the time, a banking concern, a United Bank of Switzerland. Mm. I didn't know who they were. And we go over to the building, and we're standing in front of the building, and my partner says to me, he goes, y- you don't even know what they do, do you? I said, <laughs> no, but I know they got their initials on the top of the 47-story building, so they must be you know, they're, they're, <laughs> they must be a big company. Yeah, yeah. But, um, you know, it was funny because... As we went through a lot of these interviews, it was, you know, Conoco Phillips. They were major corporations, yeah. every one of them. I can't even list them at this point. But um, a lot of the things they were, they, they really were looking for, you know, uh, connectivity to government. Mm. <clears throat> and having been a mayor, you know, you are the guy, right. you know. So it, it never gets out of you. You know, when you, you went into, you know, the assembly, it, it was the same kind of thing. You know, mm. people are coming to you because, you know, you may be sitting on a committee and they have, you know, they want to get to know you and, and, and get a feel for how the state is feeling about different things. But um, there's real, really no magic to it. I think your person, personality and your personal skills are a big part of it. And I, it goes back to that seven kids in the family and, right, right. and the whole thing. You know, you had a lot of exposure to, right. to people. And, um, I, you know, being a paper boy, you know, that, 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 that was a big deal. Right. You know, I mean, I can't, I can't un, uh, underscore it. It sounds kind of silly and simple, but, right. you know, you're, you're responsible for money. You know, you had a, you know, you stopped at the right. candy store on the way home and, right. and, and, spent the tenth of it but right. you know you you had to um you know pay for the papers that you had at the end of the week and right. and go through it and then you know it, it brought you the responsibility of you know i remember buying my first bike but mm. you know like yeah. i it was always hand-me-downs with a big family you know you, right. you had your brother's bike and this and that and then i wanted my own bike i remember i went out and bought a uh a, 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 a columbia playboy Mm. Yeah, that was the name of the bike, you wow. know. I didn't even know what a Playboy was, you right. know. It's just, uh, but um, you know, you you it gave you an opportunity to learn how to how to be responsible for money and 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 the interaction with people, going to collect money for them. You right. had to realize how much they actually owed you, and right. you know, and, and the tipping process was part of the experience. You know, if you mm. were you know, you knew so and so liked it in his mailbox. You know, and 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 mm. uh, and the mailman would say, "You're not allowed to put the mail, the, the paper in the mailbox." And I said, "Well, right. <laughs> you know, I mm-hmm. continued to do it because the guy right. gave me a good tip." You know, right. but um, you know, it was all those types of things that uh, m- made a difference. And then as I got, I I remember when I was 16, I was working in a place called Sweeties. It was a it was a sweet shop. Mm. John and Lenny's, some people called it, because those were the two guys that ran it. And, um, you know, you uh, you went in after school, you cleaned the drains and cleaned the place up. It was closing time. Right. And actually, uh, I, I tell the story, I was at uh, Wharton Business School. I was asked to do an interview, and, mm. and she said, I, you know, how did you become a jeweler? And I said, for a quarter. 
And she looked perplexed, and I said, well, I was making a uh, dollar twenty-five an hour. And the guy that came in every, every day at a quarter to four before they closed and got his coffee and his bagel, and he, um, he said, you're looking for a job? And I said, no, I have one. I thought I was being smart, and he says, I pay a dollar fifty. I became a jeweler the next day for a quarter. I did yeah. that for you know thirty seven years or so, and right. and uh, you know, but um, I learned a lot in in the in the business. It was uh, I I had a good sense of perception. You know, I yeah. can remember it was funny. Now this fellow that was the jeweler was a, 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 an assistant district attorney. Mm -hmm. In 1939, wow. in Shaker Heights, Cleveland, Ohio, which was the wealthiest Jewish community in the country at the time, the Great Depression comes along, and he's, you know, he's like looking like the rest of the world for jobs. And his brother-in-law was a guy um, that had a jewelry store. It was a chain. He had one in Elizabeth, New Jersey, one in Roseau Park, and one in Rawway. And it was called A.R. Goldblatt and Company, you know. Yeah. Nobody knew who uh, A.R. Goldblatt was. And right. I think the A.R. was actually for the owner. Arthur Ravish was his name, right, right. you know. Yeah. But uh, there was no Goldblatt, you know, that anybody knew of. And, and uh, you know, I, I uh, became a jeweler and did that for a, a long time. And I, I can remember the, the first time when cubic zirconias came out and wow. the fake diamonds and this was a big thing because before that there was no such thing and, and, he, and I just had an eye for it and I I said to the jeweler I said that's a that's a cubic zirconia and he said uh, how would you know and I took the pliers and crushed it and he he was kind of shocked at first but I said a diamond wouldn't crush you yeah. know <laughs> yeah. and so yeah. you know I uh it, it it was it was a great experience you know, that taught me a lot about life and people and you know I was always around a lot of people so yeah. being in the legislature um, is not much different M mostly you're talking to different people who are meeting with you because of a self interest you know a, a company has uh, you know a perspective on life and then you have to weigh out which about fairness well <clears throat> you know it's again like that great song the the elbows connected to the shoulder bone or whatever, yeah, yeah, however yeah. it goes. Yeah. You know, there's a, there's a, there's a uh, cause and effect to everything that, you know, you look at legislation and I probably look at it with a different, more, a different level of defining eye than some, you know, I'm, many legislators are attorneys, you know, I, yeah. you know, I, I didn't bother going to college. I, right, I, right, right. I'm proud of it in a weird way, yeah. you know. But um, I uh, learned a lot about it through the, all all of those experiences. They were a big deal. You took a motorcycle trip across the country. I think when you were eighteen, right after uh, high school, yeah. um, and I remember you telling me that that had a huge huge impact on just communities, seeing different kind of communities, um, and also like arts and, and entertainment, and you know what makes a vibrant community. Um, what what makes it? So can you talk about your experience of that trip, sure. and also sure. how did that shape your um, your just your mind as a business owner that you know sure. lives and works in in, in in Broadway, and then as a mayor, and then as a legislator? Sure. Yeah, motorcycles were always a big part of my life. I I still have one, although I don't ride any longer. I, for those watching, I'd love to sell it. You know? <laughs> um, <laughs> It's an odd bike out of the 23 motorcycles that I owned over my years. Uh, it was an odd one to end up with. It's a Ducati 998 race engine on a touring for, for, uh As you're a motorcycle guy, you would yeah. understand. A touring uh, frame. And um, I, uh, I, I, growing up, I had two people that really uh, impressed me. Um, one was uh, uh, the former Cassius Clay, Muhammad Ali. Um, floats like a butterfly, flies like a bee, stings like a bee. Um, I just was growing up, and here was a guy came out who was just 
you know, as a young kid, he didn't seem outlandish to my parents. He, 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 my dad being in the Navy for 23 years and a guy that didn't go into service as a conscientious objector, like, didn't sit well with him. And here he was like, I thought he was the greatest thing since sliced bread. And, and uh, you know, he was in, in, you know, he was very well spoken. He was a changing time. I, a great time to grow up as a kid in this mid-60s. Um, the world was changing. Um, a different level of respect was coming f from, in odd ways, you know, being exposed. Uh, the Nation of Islam was growing, and Muhammad Ali was really the, a changing factor in that period of time. And, you know, uh, I didn't see him as an evasive, uh, you know, uh, type of guy or anything, you know, at, at that point. Um, I, th I was getting to the age of... of uh, of military service and I was in high school and I, I wanted to go to Vietnam. I thought it was like yeah. a road trip, you know, I right. mean, you know, and we had several kids in, in school that had graduated two, three years before us that had died. Um, and they would announce this on, I remember one was on March 3rd and March 9th, my mom's birthday. And it was a young kid from Rawway who, who had, we knew the family and he had died. And, um, you know, so suddenly there was a different out view uh, of this. And, um, you know, I, I uh, <clears throat> you know, I was kind of an adventurous. So it's um, one side of me was saying, oh, this could be a neat thing to do. And, you know, not thinking of, you know, at 18 the, and a guy that rode a motorcycle, the consequences of getting killed on a motorcycle were, weren't part of my uh, my thought train, you know, and uh <laughs> I wound up buying the motorcycle uh, a couple of weeks after my brother's best friend got killed on his, wow. which made my parents think that middle child, they were right about that, <laughs> <laughs> you know, whoever they are, yeah. you know. But um, so then I decided to go on a cross-country trip, and I, I left. Um, my father, I'll never forget it, he told me to come in, and my mother, I came home one night, and my friends were sitting in my living room, and my I, you know, I was wondering, you know, what was going on. And yeah. my father said, "My, uh, come in the kitchen. I want to talk to you. My mother ran upstairs in tears. And she said to him as she was closing the bedroom door, she said, Tom, Tom, talk to that boy. You know, <laughs> and my father calls me in the kitchen and he says, what the hell's wrong with you? He says, you got your mother all upset. He goes, why do you want to go to, you know, uh, California anyway. I said, I, I want to see the Pacific Ocean. He says, I was in the Navy 23 years. It looks just like the one we have here, you know. He said, why don't you go to Alaska? It's the last frontier. And I just got a pass from my old man, you know. Wow. And I, I, He walked out and um, he said to my mother, now he's talking about going to Alaska. <laughs> And uh, he said the Alcan Highway they just built, and it was, think of this, it's 1973, you know, and uh, the end of the war, and um, also they, oil, the oil embargo st right. started, and so they, they, the Alcan Highway was built, it was a stone road that I wanted to ride up my mo motorcycle for like right. 700 miles or something, like, right. what right. was I thinking, Yeah, you know, and, um, and, um, you know, I, so I, I left for uh, by myself, and uh, I stopped at the Grand Diner. My buddies, uh, whose father owned it, you know, they gave me breakfast, and right. off I went. And uh, I had a, a a jean jacket, what they call the dungaree jacket, you know, yeah. like a, a blue jean jacket. That that was it, you know. And uh, I didn't even have a sleeping bag. Wow. You know, I had a lean to, a, a little tent, you know, until yeah. I hit a like a massive rainstorm one night and then I I remember wall drug it's a big stop in the midwest you know you see signs for 200 miles out you know wow. visit wall drug and uh, it's not even a drug store it's uh, by the way it's it's just the name of the place and I uh, bought a tent there you wow. know and uh, you know then I I got up I rode with some guys from the midwest and they were older, and one was a conscientious objector, and one just got back from Vietnam, and these guys were saying, like, uh, you know, 
you might not want to really go to Alaska. <laughs> you know, like, so um, I had a call in every Sunday, and I missed a call. Wow. And then the next week I was in Mexico. And my, in my, Mexico? Mexico, yeah. I, got, I went to Tijuana and out. That was it. Wow. And my, I called at 4 o'clock that day, and my father was answers the phone. He goes, your mother was worried all week. You know, you, you could have called on a Monday, you know. So I, uh, I called, and uh, he said, where are you? And I said, I'm in Tijuana. And he said, uh, Mary, it's your son. He made a left instead of a right. You know, and that was a famous line for years. And, uh, you know, so I, I was kind of like a get up and do it type of guy. You right. know? And uh, got me a long way. You know, I mean, uh, I, in the jewelry business all those years and, and, and the state legislature. And, you know, between being the mayor and all of that kind of stuff, uh, the legislature was easy. Um, so much of the issues you ran into somewhere along the line, you know, and the ones that you didn't, uh, like, you know, I wound up chairing the environment in the state and, uh, that kind of, uh, that, um, experience really came from the mayor. And when I was, uh, elected, the guy before me lost his election yeah. because they were building, uh, you know, the, the state of New Jersey came up with a, a mandate that each county was responsible for their garbage. Mm. That that was a big issue. That was a really huge issue that is you know, almost incomprehensible now, you know. You just throw it out and go someplace. But um, Union County decided to build a... Uh, there were only, at that time, two things you could do with it. You could They were dumping it in the ocean off the coast of New Jersey. And, mm. Plastics, uh, after D- yeah. Dustin Hoffman's famous line, plastics in the movie The Graduate, yeah. um, that became a big thing. And, and all this stuff was just floating up onto our shores and it was, you know, killing, you know, wildlife and, and things. So um, um, burying it in, in the ground, it was going into these unsealed areas for the most part, just just burying everything. There's there's right. mounds of it, fresh hills in, in Staten Island. You can yeah. see it. It's... It, Somebody once said to me, is that the first range of the Wachungs? I said, no, that's the coast. <laughs> the West is over here. Yeah. And, um, y- you know, so they, they, they were building a waste to energy facility, which uh, transformed garbage into electricity. 30,000 homes are, right. are lit from that, and that became a remarkable thing. So it really wasn't the demonization that... That it was that it was probably sounder than dumping it in the ocean or burying it. Now the landfills at least are lined, you know. Right. But ocean dun- dumping has has right. been stopped. Yeah. So when you're traveling through the country as well as Mexico, what did you notice about communities that were vibrant and well off versus mm-hmm. the ones that were really slowly dying? Like mm-hmm. what what made these communities mm-hmm. um, just a better place to be? Yeah. Well, actually, um, I had been all around the world. I, I, I was in Istanbul. I, 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 um, when John Kerry was running for president, uh, I was on his, his uh, no exploratory committee, yeah. you know, for some strange reason. I, I knew a fellow named uh, Clay Constantino, who was a, a U.S. ambassador, and he was at Seton Hall University, and he asked me to be on the board at Seton Hall, the right. School of Diplomacy and International Relations. And... Um, so I was had the opportunity to meet John Kerry and 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 uh, you, you know I I became uh, a voting member for the United States at the World Water Forums wow. and you know and, uh, wound up casting a vote for the U.S. in Istanbul, Mexico City, yeah. and Marseille. You know. Yeah. What could be a way to develop? Um, a community, whether it's you know a street corner or a whole town. Mm-hmm. Um, what are some ways that people can develop a community through the arts and, yeah. and entertainment? Well, you know, when I was in my hat as a redevelopment consultant for several cities in New Jersey, I uh, it was interesting. Everybody was trying to reinvent themselves. And right. one of my reports was dubbed, uh, it's in the mail, not the mall. And um, Amazon changed the world. You know, uh, online shopping, you know, right. I, I used to tease my wife because she's like, I think their biggest, third biggest con- customer in the world. Because every day there's, uh, 
My dog doesn't even bark at the Amazon truck anymore. <laughs> he thinks the guy brings the, the chewies, you know, and it's, yeah. it's, it's crazy. Um, the uh, retail changed drastically with it, uh, right. for the better or the worse. You right. know, it's a, it, we're living in the age of communication, and here, you know, here we are doing an interview. Yeah. yeah. It's a... Uh, uh, probably more people will see than come to a regular council meeting or something, you know? Yeah. Um, you know, uh, the, the change is, is part of, you know, the universe. I mean, it, it goes way beyond humanity. It, right. It's, right. it's something that happens, and you have to be prepared for it. And sometimes change happens, and it's a bad thing, and additional change turns it into a good thing. You yeah. Know? So, yeah. Yeah. How and why does social and economic development work through the arts? Like, why does that work and, and how does that take place? Well, you know, time, you know, is uh, you know, a big part of rock and roll. The time is on our side. You know, there were right. so many songs you could name. But time is important to people. And, um, you know, quality time is more important to people. So it's it, it becomes... Um, well, you know, the arts and entertain arts and entertainment part became a big part part of it, you know, mm. and and they were, you know, they were daunted by by COVID, you know, to right. say the least. But um, we had uh, in developing the downtown, the transformation went from retail to a place of gathering, mm. uh, eatery food became a big issue there's more if you look in the average downtown there's more eateries than anything else yeah. you know it's become uh in our busy lives in this age of communication we wound up um uh you know dialing for for uh, food yeah. as opposed to right. Uh, maybe going out as much, and, right. and primarily post COVID. You know, right. uh, even today, it's just it's getting back to it. But you go into a restaurant, and these guys are, uh, you know, are really working hard to yeah. try to stay alive. Food was always an industry where it was easy to get into. You know, the overhead necessarily wasn't uh, difficult. I mean, I I had. A highly ranked New Jersey restaurant that I always just I said never had so much fun losing half a million dollars you know um, we went out and bought a, a stove you know I let the chef pick out the stove and it was a bonnet stove it was forty thousand dollars just wow. for the stove you know wow. <laughs> so it's uh you know that a tough business to make a yeah. make a buck in yeah yeah um, what about like festivals and music and and um, uh, uh, that's yeah. that's a huge. Well, we did when when I was mayor, we had um, opened up a, a Harley Davidson. Uh, being a motorcyclist, of yeah. course, where, like how could I resist? There was yeah. one in Rawway, which was one of the oldest ones in the country. It was on Route One, and um, <clears throat> we opened up one down in a Central Business District, and yeah. I had the pleasure of riding a Harley through the front door without a helmet on as the, the mayor. I, you know, I thought that was kind of cool. Though. Yeah. <laughs> People are clapping. And they go, this is your mayor. You know? Comes <laughs> right through the front door. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. There's a little stop. You know? Yeah. So can you give us a few scenarios if, if someone is, let's say a musician mm -hmm. or, um, you know, they, the they want to do it's involved in art somehow, mm -hmm. what are some ways they can create opportunity mm -hmm. for themselves yeah. Um, you know, as, as you know, these jobs are changing, right, with the change in times. Mm. Um, but if you're a musician, if you're an artist, if you're some kind of entertainment person, what are some ways that you can create opportunity to be involved and build a community as well as, um, you know, develop opportunities for yourself? Well, you know, one of the things that most communities have done in, in, the, in the, you know, in the, one of the worlds that I know well was the retail, you know, as it changed, uh, the outdoor events became a dig, big thing. Yeah. You know, from the Hot Rods and Harleys events, but there were there's there's probably four or five seasonal events that they had outside, right. and it's a, it, you know that was a big opportunity for you know right. for food, food vendors and and, and people uh, that sort. But um, you know th that model has changed. Uh, sociability is something that people really like and mm. you know and, and the, the 
the post COVID world is like people are anxious to just get out again yeah. and and and, uh, and get on with life. You know, yeah. I'm sh- I'm sure, um, you know, the awareness of of what COVID understroke uh, became obvious to more people. And yeah. y- you know, I don't think the mask is ever going away. Well, well, I was always a big fan of the Long Ranger anyway, and he always wore a mask. You know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. For sure. So as the um, as the retail, um, like you said, the, the reality now is in the, in the mail, not in retail. What was that phrase? It, 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 retail has changed for several reasons. Right. COVID being a big one, and it, right. it's, it's in the mail, not the mall. It's in the mail, not the mall. So, so the fact that retail is not what it used to be that had a huge part on entertainment and music and what right. people do, right? So you mentioned that. Um, food right and restaurants is one of the biggest drivers for economic development mm-hmm. in towns um so i would imagine that 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 had a huge impact on just entertainment in general right mm-hmm. that the, the retail oh, yeah, was not yeah yeah our, our downtown festivals in, in in this town are are well attended right and um you know if you you look at the the makeup of the buildings in the downtown right you know that dynamic has changed when when i was uh, a kid there were seven jewelries stores in the downtown area there right. there, there aren't any <clears throat> and uh, right. there's a business where people are actually buying diamonds through the mail yeah. i mean you know if i told my former um um the fellow who owned the store before me he would he would have thought you've lost your mind yeah. who would ever do that but that's the new reality and um you know, so the dynamic has changed straight, g- greatly. So the food industries have picked up in the central. Bit. People still want to go out to eat, and 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 music and entertainment, street fairs and things of that sort are are really where you see a lot of it. I know when I was uh, doing the consulting in downtown Burlington, we would have the street fairs all the time. The yeah. musicians on different corners, and you know, um, yeah. and even in some of the restaurants, they would have you know uh, somebody you know like yourself playing a violin yeah. or a piano in there and and different things so i i think you know it's one of those things that's kind of like uh, no pun intended background music you know it's there but and people really enjoy it but they don't think about um putting it into effect you know so much of course yeah i know that the the union county performing arts center Mm -hmm. that's here in rawway that also brings in crowds, right? But that's more of bigger acts, right? Yes. Yeah, um, yeah. But that, that w- I would imagine, also brings crowds in and then they go to restaurants and then... Um, yes. Um, so that that's also like that kind of entertainment, right? Having a right. venue. Um, how difficult would it be to get, you know, can, can a town just build something or like how... how no, can the more... facilities themselves are uh, expensive. It's part of one of the part of the dynamic that makes it uh, tough. I know in, for instance, in Burlington, when we have the river uh, fest there, um, they bring in a shell, a, a, a shell, because the projection of the sound is, is critical to the whole experience. You yeah. know, it's, and I've been to f- events where it's just so poorly done. You know, they're setting up mics and things and it's open air and it's just, just not, you know, mm. resonating, yeah. you know, but, um, the outdoor space is, is, is you know, is critical. Like you, you take uh, the Garden State Arts Center, you know, down yeah. in, in, in Homedale and that, that, that I mean, you know, twenty seven million dollars or something, to, you know, wow. to build a shell is not you know, for the faint hearted. Yeah. You know. So um the many towns are you know, the street corner guys are are are, are it's a big deal. Yeah. You know, it's a, and it's yeah. pretty cool too. People yeah. like to see the stuff, you know. They right. like to be feel like they're part of the the you know, the the performance itself. Yeah. How would someone go about uh, creating a festival let's say you know uh, doesn't make it doesn't have to be new jersey any state right let's say right. Uh, a group of musicians and artists right. want to do a festival how would they go about to try to create something like that yeah um, well the town the, the governing body has to be in favor of it because it's not just the act you know like the musician looks at it from one perspective right <clears throat> municipality looks at it as, as another one mm. drinking in the streets uh, the police departments love it because th- they get time and a half, you know, right. because they bring in, you know, you know it, it, like you take a c- city of railway size. Here's the dynamic. It's 30,000 people, you know, um, 
limited eight, eight police officers max on on duty right. during a time. You know, now you have you know thirty thousand people coming into your town. Right. You know, and drinking in the streets, a lot going on. There, you you have to be able to um, you know to to handle that. You right. know, and so there's a cost factor to it as well as uh, you know your first aid squads and things, you know, it's, right. uh, y- yeah. you know, it, 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 you put that many people together and throw alcohol into it and y- you can have a, right. you could have a disaster. And I, I would say, by the way, it's never been a problem. We, right. we've, um, you need to prepare for it, but, um, it, it, the reality of it is rarely do you you have an issue with right. it. Most people come here to enjoy the music and enjoy the performance. Right. You know? Yeah. So it sounds like a, a much bigger undertaking than it seems from the outside. Outside. Right. Gotcha. Right. To make something like that happen. Right. Gotcha. And then there's a cost to it as well. You have to pay the musicians and everybody else. Somebody's got to right. pick up the tab. You right. Know? Right. Right. Um, what if, let's say, I wanted to do a festival in some other town, right, that doesn't perhaps have one? How would one go about doing that? I guess you'd have to go to the city and you, maybe... You would have to go to the, to the city. And, and actually, in a lot of cases, you know, um, counties are pretty astute to this. Like Union County has yeah. the, the festivals in the, in, the, in the parks, you know, and, yeah. and things like that. Um, but the, the if depending on the scope of it, you know, it's either a county entity or okay. a municipal entity. Yeah. And then you know they're gonna want to know who's gonna pay for the police officers, the overtime, and all that kind of stuff, gotcha. and 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 you know the dollars and cents of it. Gotcha. Yeah. yeah. So un- unfortunately, I think all of it, whether it's music or arts, yeah. or it, it always yeah. comes down to money. Yeah. Money, right? Yeah. yeah. You have a lot to. of you, you see a lot of municipalities. I think smart governance recognizes the value to it right and realizes when you do that all the food vendors you know forget the guys who come in but the places who are open right. do well and right. you know the, the the first thing you hear from a downtown business group is oh you're gonna close the streets they won't be able to come in and then they see the amount of people there mm-hmm. and through osmosis they're going to get x amount through their door because there's too many people in the line for the other place that they wanted to go to, yeah. you know. I mean, it's it's it, it water runs downhill, and yeah. and and the, the, they're all busy. Yeah. During it, you know, <clears throat> uh, we we had one or two people said, "Well, I'm not opening. This is going to be too much," and then you know. <laughs> The other guys go, I'm glad he didn't open, you know? <laughs> More business for me. Yeah. 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 So so I guess the value is, right, any kind of social event would right. bring in people to wherever you are. Right. right. And people just, we're social creatures, right? We want right. to spend time together, eat, drink, enjoy music, whether it's as background or we go see an act. Yeah. Right. So I guess the Rudiments val- work. What yeah. other rudiments? What other rudiments? <laughs> gotcha. People right. show up to net sound, you know. It, mm. it's, it's yeah. Tracks them. Yeah, yeah. Um, can you share like how much this like? Because I don't think most people realize how much does it cost to put on a, a small town, you know, right. like not 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 something large, but like what does it cost? Any idea to to well, like, what does it cost to put a, a, a oh festival? yeah, it's 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 a lot more than you would think. First of all, you have to pay the act. Right. You know, and some of these right. guys, like you bring in Southside Johnny and the Asbury Jukes or something, you know, like we, you know, you're, you're paying, you know, double digits. Yeah. And then, and for a couple of hours and then, um, overtime police officers, you know, right. you, you have to have more people there and, and, um, you know, that's in the tens of thousands, you wow. know, so you, you, you have to, the, the benefit really is. Several. Some are in, uh, intangible, like the impression of your town. Mm. I, I remember having the outdoor things, and people say, "Oh, it's really beautiful. I haven't been down here in twenty years." You mm. know, and and, and um, that was their experience, and they had a great time because it was somebody when you know, like when when they had hair, they uh, they liked listening to this person. You know, right. it it's. It's an, it's really an interesting dynamic. We would have people. I can remember hearing people saying, 
well, I moved to Westfield or I moved to Summit or something and I haven't been back here. It's it's really nice, you know, like mm. they're su- they're surprised. They right. you know that that you know, it's the exposure that's important, you know, and and also it it brings back memories for people. They remember when they went to high school here or something and they they go back and visit the high school. You know, it it's um yeah. It's uh, it's an interesting dynamic, right. you know. Right. I think everybody visits their when you know they move out and of the their hometown and go back and visit and yeah. It's always better than they thought it was, you know. It's it's um, they suddenly uh, recapture their youth and and dramatize, you know, how great life was. Right. You know? Right. Of course. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah, so it sounds like it's a lot more complicated to really run a well-functioning um, town, city, municipality that has things and opportunities like performing and, and, and arts and food. Um, so it sounds like it, it's, yeah. it's way harder than people yeah. think. So some, well, some cities, it's, it's second, na- it's first nature to them, mm-hmm. not even second nature, yeah. like Asbury Park, you know, places like that, w- which had dramatic changes over the years. And, right. you know, shore towns, you know, they have yeah. influx of people in the summer. Their population goes from, you know, 13,000 to 65,000 daily and, mm. you know, things of that sort. And, and, you know, some of it is just dramatic change. Yeah. yeah. So, you know... Um, you, you're not not one shoe fits all. Mm. You know, every town is a little bit different. I right. I think it's great. You know, I've gone to the events in Carteret. You know, and 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 he does a great job with it. You yeah. know, with uh, you know some of, some of these uh, summertime performances in these little towns. Yeah, is pretty is pretty neat. You yeah, know? yeah. And a lot of times it's new talent. You know, yeah. sometimes yeah. the guy the undercard winds up becoming the the main guy you know like it's yeah. not the old the old has-beens that uh that sounds so great anymore you know? right right so. right so i guess if if you're an artist musician some kind of entertainment based person i guess mm-hmm. you'd first have to look for a town that is growing and um trying to attract people right, right. i guess that would be the first step um, and then the second step, I guess, just go talk to people, right? I think that's one of the things that that makes you so successful is you're just you just you're so willing to, you just go talk to people. I mean, uh, would that I guess be the next step, right? Find a town that you'd want to somehow participate in, right? Yeah, yeah. And then just go talk to people, yeah. whether it's um, find out what kind of events they have. You know, right. I mean, they all have schedules that they put out. You know, months in advance. You know, so a lot of times you got to go in the year before to get on the card for the, mm. the following year, yeah. you know, yeah. and then uh, look to see which one, you know, uh, some of them have numerous events, you know, yeah. uh, a lot of towns, you know, you, you go in not just the shore towns, but, you know, right. Prince, Princeton, there's, yeah. you know, uh, there's a lot of towns that just have events going on all the time. I know up in North Jersey, I've been to a couple of places in the summer. On, on a, a Sunday afternoon jaunt and you go yeah. in and, and wow, yeah, what's going on here? You yeah, know? yeah, that's great. Yeah, so I, I guess, and the reason I'm asking these questions is, you know, musicians and artists, we're, we're you know, you're told, you know, you got to practice, you're here in your room, but then like, what do you, what, what do, you do? How do you create um, an opportunity to then use your talents, right? So I guess get a group together, right? A quartet, whatever, right? And then just go talk to towns and see what events they have and maybe do some arrangements of pop music that people would like to hear, um, right? And I guess guess that could be a way forward, right? To just get a group and go talk to people. Yeah. I'm sure some of these towns have the same guys, you know, that figured out some way to network it, you know? And and, uh, I think you have to look around the sea and and get there plenty of time in advance to you know, see how you can fit in. Yeah. 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 There's always an empty spot. Right. Yeah. And I guess also just talk to businesses, right? Um, I mean, if they have an event or, um, I know a lot of, I, I would say for, for the, you know, like Luciano's here, you know, they, they, once in a while they have somebody playing in there and something, you know, I mean, uh, Flynn's, you know, they they have a stage there in the back, you know? Um, I think a lot of the, the, owners uh start to realize they have regular crowds 
and they don't feel like spending the extra money, you know, mm. which I think is a shame because I think I do think people do enjoy, you know, to hear hear a live performance. They right. certainly sell a lot more beer when people are playing music right. than when they're not. They can fool themselves all they want, but yeah. I, I yeah. think the value is definitely uh, a proven factor. Right. You know? Right. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Got it. So. Any businesses listening out there, get some live music going. That's right. <laughs> good, good. Um, you're very good at solving problems and just dealing with conflict and uh, conflict and getting everyone on the same page. Can you share any advice on uh, just how can people be better at um, just dealing with each other, especially if they're um, they're not agreeing on a particular issue or just in general? What, what is like? How do you get so good at just have such an easygoing uh, way of just dealing with life? that's a funny people you know some people that know me say oh he talks a lot but you know what what they don't realize I listen a lot more I um, mostly everything that I I I, uh, I had a learning disability so I literally didn't r learn how to read mm. effectively until like wow. I was in my 30s probably wow. you know but um I don't think most people would have ever realized that, you know, I, I was well traveled and I met a lot of people. I did a lot of things right. and I had great stories from experience. Right. And so that is, um, a, a great shield for, um, you know, areas where I lack. Then I became a ridiculously ferocious reader of history. I yeah. I need a story, to, you know, like I, I, history attracted me. Right. And, uh, you know, because you were following some path, somebody's life and things of that sort. So it's it's interesting. But, um, it's you know, life's out there for the taking, you yeah. know. And um, I, don't be shy. You know, I, it yeah. was... The great thing with the Irish, they they were never shy. They were just, uh, you know, yeah. I can do that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, why not me? Right, why not? Yeah, absolutely. Would you have any advice for high school uh, students, college students, uh, really anyone, of just how to be successful and how to deal with opportunities? But just general advice that you would give to anyone that's willing to listen. The 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 most sound piece of advice is follow your instincts. Do what you love, you know. Uh, there's today's economies. There's nothing that you can't make money doing, you know. Mm. So you should follow your 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 path. You know, follow what you like to do, and and um, you know, it goes back to what I said earlier. I you know became a jeweler because I liked it. You know, it, yeah. it, you you just you know I liked motorcycles, so I yeah it, it, anything I I accomplished it was something that you like to do. So follow your path. You know, it's it's a lot easier than people think. Uh, you, you, most people find themselves doing something that they never thought they would be doing. Hmm. You know, they they start off with a dream of I, I want to be you know a, a, an astronaut you know whatever the heck it is yeah and they wind up in you know I think if you ask that question most people how did you become this you know you'd you'd find it like it's usually well my uncle so and so or some connectivity to you, somebody in humanity gave you an opportunity along the way right and thought well you had this skill set. You know, and uh, being a salesman, you know, came natural to me. I, you know, from it goes back to the paper boy in the jewelry store, and yeah, you know, you you wound up doing that, and then eventually you you wound up in in governance. You know, so. yeah, yeah. Do you feel like you're able to make a big impact on our state and the district through your political? Um, you know, not affiliations, but like that you're an assemblyman. Like, yeah. do you feel like that makes a, a really big? Um, impact on the state and would you recommend someone to follow maybe to follow that path as well to yeah. get involved in politics sure P politics are interesting you know it's a lot more complex and simple than people <laughs> think it's an oxymoron but so is governance the you're in a legislature with 80 people and both sides have added value, even if you're not in control. 
because there's a balance of you know how people think and and so you take a bill for instance that somebody wants to put out there you yeah. know and you you need to uh, you know it goes to a committee you know like for me I'm on the environment you know right and um, you know the assembly is and 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 the committees are bipartisan you know obviously when one party is in control they control pretty much the, the those dynamics yeah however that being said there's still input from both sides you know and and it's not you know the cynical would say oh no it's not but the truth of it is it is because um any good legislation is balanced you know mm. it's it's sort of on a greater goal you know and it meets a lot of different aspects not just you know they, you put a bill out to it, it, to, to have some impact or or right. to or some control of you know pollution you know right. a perfect example you know n- nobody really likes pollution right you know and 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 so it's like well how do you how do you bring this to a point where you know the very people who who you know when I was when they were building a new waste energy facility that was a big one people were protesting in front of a house and you know but you know they all drove cars they right. they they uh, they all you know all all the things they liked were complicated because the 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 things that made the things that they like or wanted created the the problem right. so it's like okay even if you live in a tent you know somebody's you're, you're it's nylon by the way you know right. it's it's you know it, it may be one of those forever you know so there's a reality here you know that that i think that has come a long way in in the in the years that i've been doing this it's yeah. not as dramatic as it's not not as white and black as it used to be right. like the garbage was great and you, you got to do something with it right. so what were you doing you could bury it, you burn it and you could uh you know dump it in the ocean so you know the we're still producing the garbage but the effect on the environment is much better than it had been in the past and right. every issue is the same it's right. just a different cause and effect you yeah. know that yeah. th- that you have to weigh out you know and i think that people really put a lot of thought behind every one of these issues you know yeah. you, 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 music for instance is, is a funny one the humanity of it, it it's a soothing thing it, it's it's like what helps people keep their sanity they go home and they, li- they listen to music or yeah. something you know i mean Everything has a value. There's not, you know, e- even war, you know, when you think about, you know, we grew up during that Vietnam period and it seemed like it was a senseless, a senseless endeavor, you know, like yeah. people were getting killed and you, you're not seeing as much of this around the world as, you know, right. economics are truly prevail- prevailing. They're, you're finding that it's more cost effective to spend money and, and advance a, a society than to arm it. Yeah. You know. Yeah. So it's it's we we live in a complicated world. Yeah. And it's getting simpler as the days go by. <laughs> yeah. One thing I remember from high school distinctly is all the teachers would say, um, you know, be politically involved, go out and vote, but then, you know, you grow up and life gets the best of you. Um but uh so the two part question is how can people become more involved and um I think it also can be that they can talk to the local, whether it's mm-hmm. legislature or senator or write letters, but they could also do it for, you know, um, self-interest, right? Let's say they want a festival to come to town or they want some kind of a performing opportunity, right? People can also legislate, you know, not legislate, but they can um, be politically involved for what they believe in and what they need. Um, how can people get involved mm-hmm. and Well, do that? you know, it's, it, it's an interesting concept when, when you think of it. We have a basically a two party system, and uh, you and D's and R's, you know, right, uh, or D's and D's, yeah. you know, yeah. as some would say. But um, most 
you know, and look at there's there's an annual budget municipalities are had. So so much of it is prefixed, mm. you know. But in terms of and and leadership, particularly at the local level, as a, as a mayor is different than in in a larger mm. body. A mayor mm. has a town, and he, and creativity is 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 a is nothing more than a copycat industry, you know. Very few things you know as they say been there and done that yeah you know mm-hmm. but the models that seem to be favored you know um arts and entertainment is a great thing and i i kind of built a career on that yeah. and and you know and you, you came down a path because of you know the art center that was here in town and what had happened to it and and then next thing you know you're you're the mayor of the town and it's like oh n- now what do you do you know yeah um, the only thing that the taxpayers are really concerned with are taxes right their version of the world is I don't want to pay them um, but they want all the services that come with it Right, you know, and 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 when people logically think about it, they it becomes a reality of life. You're gonna pay pay if you pay for it, and then you're gonna live in a town that has a reason for you to be there. Right. Transportation is a big one. Right. Access to work, the internet has changed that. There's dynamics have changed. COVID changed that. All these things. Um, they want a place for the kids to go to school. Schools are important. You know, education is important. Um, until their kids are out of school and then they're senior citizens and they say, oh, uh, we pay too much taxes to the schools because my kids don't go there. But they did, you know. Right. They, they, we have short <clears throat> memories often. Yeah. But the reality is these are the dynamics that, that create a community. And, you know, for, for me, the arts and entertainment is 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 a no brainer. It's 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 second nature to everybody. What they don't, it's not as you know, it's tangible. You know, when you're experiencing it, but it's it's kind of uh, in the back folder uh, on the on the observation line, so to speak. You know, you don't sit there and go, I think we should have arts and entertainment. You know, right. until they. They're, they go someplace and they say, "Oh, this town does that." Everyone is a copycat, you know. Mm-hmm. And then they see what's happening one place and they they want to outdo it. And then if you're a good mayor and you have, you can stabilize your taxes, then you can do cooler things yeah. with it. And yeah. and I think that um, you know a, a lot of it, you know, and and just the the nature of life, you know, you in in the Northeast particularly, the winter people are all bound up they can't wait to the spring and these spring yeah. festivals and these yeah. things to come out and it starts all over again right. you know right so you know i i think um it's really an issue that we've come it's part of the the formula you know the arts and entertainment yeah. in in municipal government it was never really thought of that mm. for a long time. I think Woodstock changed the world. You know, really? I mean, it, uh, well, yeah, those big festivals that actually, um, I think, historically will be proven to say had had changed the dynamics of of um, how the arts were actually interpreted. Uh, you know, mm. they filtered down over, after that period in a, in a much more recognizable way than than before. I don't think right. too many people, other than me and you and a handful yeah. of other people that you know would even think of it that way but right. those are the realities of of the chain reaction right right yeah um on a very local level what's the easiest way for people to just be involved i guess go to a town a city hall meeting right a town town meeting right yeah i i mean uh you know it's jersey and know a guy who knows a guy you 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 really need to be involved you right. know people um you know you get to know your local leadership and and see what they're doing yeah and, and there a lot of times i i always remember people saying you know what we should be doing and then you you tell them well do you know we already do that you know they there, there's they don't yeah. really dig into often and many people don't dig into right. what's available in the community right you know yeah and in other communities they're you know, they're entrenched the programs are <clears throat> just you know almost on on uh, steroids right but um it, it's really just the involvement you know i i think yeah. 
it, it's not difficult. It's it's about cost at the end of who's going to pay for it. Right. Pay, you know, pay for it. And and a lot of times, you know, municipalities, if they want to kind of do some of it outside the budget, they get businesses to sponsor an act mm. or something like that. It's not a it, it's right. not a big ask, you know. And a lot of these guys want to have connectivity to local government. Right. So it's no, you know, for them to sh- uh, shell out a couple hundred dollars uh for performance is, right. is really not a big deal. But somebody on the ground, that's why Chamber of Commerces are important. You know, these are the people that are that engage in this type of activity yeah. often in downtown managements and <clears throat> local organizations, rotaries, kiwanis, you know, they're they're not as active as they used to be. But these you know, these are the community, you know, based uh, organizations that, that that you gotta kinda seek out and, and say, Hey, how would you guys like to sponsor? Right. You know, this, yeah. you, you, you might be surprised, mm. you know, a lot of those, um, older organizations, they got a ton, a ton of money inside that and nobody's asking them anymore because, you know, they're, it's, it's a, a bygone, uh, you know, in, in, in many respects, it's a bygone, uh, concept, but it, there's, right. they're still out there. Yeah. You know? I think our schools do a great job of teaching us at, you know, whether if you're a musician, how to play your instrument, um, you know, uh, if you're an artist, how to draw. But I don't think they teach us the business side of it and, mm-hmm. and how can you just, you know, put food on the table, right? Mm-hmm. So um, I think you kind of just have to almost just put yourself through a school of hard knock. Just go talk to people, get involved, figure out what's going on um, that, you know, putting these festivals on and creating this opportunity is a lot kind of more complicated than it seems yeah. right but um it sounds like just just go out there and 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 you have to just talk to people and create and maybe ask around like hey how would you yeah. guys like to uh, put on a concert right uh, maybe go to a lo- local rotary club like you said right and say hey um you know we're a group of musicians or artists uh, how would you guys like to put on a show right mm-hmm. um yeah. Yeah, I think you have to approach it not as an individual, as as a concept more. You know, like because it comes off, you know, to them as self serving. You know, if it's just you know I I, okay. I want to do this, but the concept of it has to be sold. You know, and and the value of it has to be sold. And and again, for a municipality, it's the restaurants and 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 the out, outside experience. You know, that's yeah. that that. Uh, I mean, that Hot Rods and Harley thing to this day is like a huge, you know, and the city probably doesn't put a dime out for it any yeah. longer because yeah. they, you know, they're, they're, they're pulling in some, some money on it and, yeah. and they're selling their product, which is a, yeah. a Harley yeah. Davidson or something, yeah. you know, or, you know, so anybody can really sp- sponsor it, but um, y- you need a theme. You know, it's 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 theme driven and 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 uh, people people like food food and music. Yeah. I mean, and, and a nice view. You know, like yeah. uh, you, you you know. Well, it's many of these downtowns aren't great views. That's why they do the hot rods and Harley thing. But people come and look at cars. You know. Yeah, yeah. I, I found my wife looking at a '57 Chevy and thinking that was neat, and I was thinking, is it normally a person that wouldn't really care about the car you know but when you right. see it collectively it's it, right. it's art in a different form yeah you know it's yeah. uh yeah it's the street fairs are are interesting you yeah. know and if you if you look around the state there there are some dynamic ones some of the sure places and some of the ones that have you know the garden state you know uh, cranberry festival you yeah. know i mean yeah. that's a I have a picture of me with uh, hip boots on in in a whole field of cranberries you yeah. know i mean yeah. Yeah. there's there's um there's a the, New Jersey particularly, you know, has it's a broad spectrum from Sussex County to Cape May. There's yeah. a, a lot of different things to do here. Yeah, you know? yeah. So. And what is the concept and value? I guess you have to approach it as in you'd like to build a community, provide opportunities for community to come together, but whether it's through music or through restaurants. But yeah. what would the concept and the value be of talking to businesses and towns? Um, of putting, you know, whether it's just yeah. a concert or this, like, w- what is the concept yeah. that people should well, think? Well, there's, as I said, it's not one fit at all. You may find one sponsor in a town who who would like to do something, you know. Um, you got to sell yourself, you know, in terms of, like, what you can deliver. Here, yeah. here, here's, here and this is why it's important. To, nobody is going to want to go out and just do it for the altruistic, you know, concept of it there are right. very few people i should say right. i'm sure there's 
someone out there that would. But right. you know, you know, I so it becomes self-serving to a lot of degree. Um, you know, the car dealerships are usually the biggest guys in the town. You know, and and uh, they, they have something to put on the street to you know like that. That's why that concept seems to be. A no-brainer in in, yeah. in many in many towns, you know. But uh, it's you, you got to you know. It's like entertainment. It's the concept of entertainment. You have to have a shtick, yeah. You know, and so you got to f- you got to f- find that what works here. You know, yeah. blueberries work in the blueberry capital of New Jersey. Cranberries work in a cranberry capital. Um, yeah. Food and 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 music are are you know you know. Sit on, sit down and eat. You know, right, right, and and uh, that's really what this is all. It's a basic thing, uh, camaraderie, having you know, reason for people to come around. The yeah. music draws them. You know, uh, the Pied Piper did a great yeah. deed, getting rid of rats. You yeah. know, <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, if a group or a person approached you, what kind of things would you want to see? I'm I'm assuming probably some kind of cover letter with a picture of the group, maybe a video recording of what they offer. Like, what can? Well, what, it depends if you're doing a festival or your one night gig. You know, I mean, if it's a a, a, a one man dance, it's it's a different concept. It depends what you're trying to achieve. But if you're looking for a city to utilize arts and entertainment, it's it's a broader base. You know, it's it's not just one guy coming to the plate. It's uh, you know. Coming up with here, here's what it would cost, you know, mm-hmm. and and then you got to find who's going to pay for that. If you know, uh, if they if they get the value of it, right. and they, they they you know, mayors love it because people come out and they they called it the mayor's concert series, <laughs> you know, like you know, one one guy asked me how well did, do you know so and so, and I said who's he? He he's the lead singer. And I, I have no idea. Like I don't know these people. You know, I I, I had a look at the programs beforehand. You know, just yeah. to, to keep up with the speed. Yeah. But um, you know, it's just it's it's whether or not they want to do it. And I think it's it's not a difficult thing. I would say, I think more communities are doing it than not. Yeah. You know, and and uh, it's really about what venues can you get into. You mm. know, if you you probably. There's no directory of where they all are. You know, that's it's it's a loose affiliation, you right. know, of uh, of towns. You know, like they they've all copied the concept of it. Of course. You know, but um, there is no there's no real connectivity to them yeah. collectively. Yeah. 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 Absolutely. So it's it's interesting. Got it. On a personal level, you've talked and you've dealt with lots of people from lots of countries different backgrounds um what are some things that made you want to work with some people and not on a personal level Mm -hmm. as far as who they are as humans Mm -hmm. and how they communicate well i may be a little different in the sense that i haven't met anybody that i I didn't want to or not not that i didn't want to work with them that I, i wouldn't work with okay um it's it it can it's a broad question and and to probably put it into the most relatable terms it can start with i've heard this one on it's not very creative but i've heard it more than than not i have a bone to pick with you this is when you're the mayor of a city. Somebody comes up to you and says, I have a bone to pick with you. And my line was, I have one left. It's right here. You know, and they would kind of, it kind of eases the tension. Mm. And, and, and usually, I think the issue is, to me that was intriguing, is that people don't understand how government works. A guy mm. gets elected because he wants to help, you know. Right. And people think that they don't want to help, you know. Mm. But they're all there because... They're usually extroverted type of characters to start with to some degree. I don't know too many introverted politicians. You know, I mean, that that term has such a, a, a negative condensa- uh, uh, connotation. Con- connotation. Yeah. In uh, condensation too, you know, it's very <laughs> foggy. Um, in 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 uh, New Jersey, particularly where it's so densely populated. Um, they aren't 
used to dealing with the public official. So their approach often is uh, offensive, you know, in, in, in an odd way. Mm. Um, the politician generally is there to try to help, you know, mm. and they don't, that doesn't translate somehow, hmm. you know. But um, it, it's really, you know, most of the things that people came up that, that where they were aggressive about it were easy fixes and, matter of fact, things that uh, governance always likes to fix, you know. But, yeah. um, you know, we would have people, like I'll give you a common complaint. Um, people cut their grass too early in the morning, you know. I mean, everybody in our block, has, they, they all have landscapers, and the, guy, the same guy does all of them. So we have like five hours of this noise that goes, drives my wife crazy. Yeah. Um, I just kind of zone it out, you know, because I'm get used to getting yelled at. So, you know, but... Um, those are the type of complaints that you get. You know, it's their uh, quality of life issues. Right. You know, um, we get people say, oh, the guy across the street parks in front of my house. Well, park in front of his, you know. <laughs> I mean, what, what, I, you know, it's, it's the reality of basic things. It, a lot of things annoy people, yeah. but there's nothing that governance can do about it. You know, you have right. parking on one side of the street. You know, there's are, there's already so many laws to, to deal with most of the issues. Right. So really, I think governance in New Jersey comes down to property taxes. It's more, yeah. the, it really, that's it, it, the number one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, th- yeah. ten most important things to people. That's what they're... in. That's what they're concerned about. And there's just so much you can do because right. you got to pick up their garbage. you got to do the basic things. And there's yeah. a cost to, to yeah. that. Nobody wants to pay for it, but, you, you know, they think government is something, mana from heaven or something, where, you know, you get it for, you get it for free, right. you know. Right. But right. it's, you know, I think re- really uh, when you get down to it, they, they don't know really what people do and basically what we do is we legislate they they come up with laws and 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 those laws are based on complaints and and issues and and you know you you figure out what to do and and some of it is re most of what we do now is refining laws that already exist yeah Yeah. You you find out through experience that well this here's the trickling effect and and you know yeah you got to you got to change it up a little bit, yeah. you know. But uh, you know, it's it's. Um, I think the hardest thing about it is uh, expectations. Mm. You know, um, the reality of it is there's uh, there's a pot of money that's being spent on services and needs and you know. Right. Y- social needs alone you yeah. know uh poverty be- begets crime you know so you want to fight crime you have to fight poverty you know right. and then you have people who say oh i don't want to pay i don't want to put money in for, and i i, I, was, I said to one guy who are those people who are these people that you're talking about? You right. know, you, you, there's there's one race. It's the human race, and right. and we're here as stewards of it. So, yeah. th- it's um, you know, some people are more fortunate than others, and 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 it's the way the world goes. You yeah. know, so it's uh, I think I think people really get it now. I think one thing about the age of communication is there's so much exposure. Of, of things and and people you know like it's really interesting when you see causes and how people are raising money for a certain thing there's a war in a certain country the Ukraine is a great example of it and yeah. I see I see stop Putin signs all over the way <laughs> you, know, yeah. like, yeah. you know it's um, you know we pick up the the gauntlet that we want to based on you know our experiences, and yeah. it and collectively it's pretty it's it's pretty powerful when yeah. you, when you think about it. You know it, yeah. it really is. Uh, there aren't a lot of people walking around the streets without something to eat. 
you know, and there's yep. services available for for everybody. Um, I think um, government has done a, a fairly good job, a great job in this country at dealing with the dynamics, you yeah. know, better than o- other countries have. And um, not all have the same social economics, you know. Yeah. We are the melting pot, Yeah, you know. You're very good at just getting things done. So if someone has either an issue or something they want solved, what's the best way to get what they want? What's the best way to... to solve issues interesting question well in governance um it, it's through legislation you know the, you know a lot of you know as i mentioned earlier a lot of the issues that come to you are are really more emotional than than reality right. and, and uh you know um i think that you know states like new jersey that are are so populated the advantage that new jersey has as this kind of melting pot lack of a better term is that it has a wide net and 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 you know in in terms of issues that people could possibly have yeah. you know when when you know again you know when you go cross country you you get into the mil- those middle states the between the two oceans other yeah. than those coastal lines that middle you know they have like uh two cities in in each town that have any real importance you know mm. and then there's a lot of gap in between with a lot of small town USA so these local economies are 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 yeah are what uh, are driven them so it's you know new jersey's kind of interesting because you have everything here it's just it's a stone throw throw away you know and uh it's you know it's a it's it's a great place to live and yeah bring up your kids i think yeah. it's a broad-based um, just just meeting the people of new jersey is is, is an interesting concept you know it's a <laughs> you know they're they're um They've experienced a lot in life, you know, right. in, compared to small town USA. Yeah, you know? yeah. So granted how New Jersey is so populated and it's such a melting pot, um, what are some ways just um, how we could do it better? Like what are some, some ways of just... Um, I think that question was probably a- yeah. asked by, to Governor Tom Kane when he said New Jersey and you perfect together. He sounded like he's from Boston when he said it, but you know the the um, you know I don't I don't know that there's uh, improvement is a tough thing to measure because mm. to some people you, you know. Uh, you know, you feel like you're fixing broken, but you're not, you know, I mean, uh, it's a tough question. Mm. It's, it's, I think that, I think that, uh, we're in a pretty good state in terms of the exposure is really, is what makes us a, a great state or, you know, you've met somebody from every walk of life, you know, your, your tolerance levels for people is much, yeah. uh, you know, much more acceptable than, than uh, other places. And I think that's what makes New Jersey so, so unique, you know, it's, uh, it's, an, it's, it's, it is different than, you know, than look at, I, I was in Haiti after the earthquake and, um, uh, Before the earthquake, okay, it looked like an earthquake. You know, it was, it was, you, you know, we don't realize how parts of the world are, you know, how, you know, fortunate we are, you know, how, you, you know, you, you know, you hear people complain sometimes. And if you've been around, you know, like the, the world, like I, I mean, you know, my trip to Istanbul was great, you know, the, the to see the vitality of a major city. And, but then when you get out into other parts of the city, you're going right. like, you know, 
I truly understand what a third world could, what that actually means. Right. And you have third worlds here. You know, you go to Appalachia and, yeah. and you go to, the, you know, down parts of West Virginia that I, I went through on, on the motorcycle one time and you're going like, my gosh, yeah. you know, Bruce Springsteen, born in the USA, had a whole different meaning, you know. Yeah. But, uh, you know, life is interesting and we're just here to try to make it a better place and and um, make life as easy as it can be. And and I think what we need to do is teach people that we don't have that much to complain about <laughs> yeah, <laughs> at yeah. the end of the drill. Yeah, great, great advice. Yeah, if you, if you think you have problems, take a wider look right. of, of, of where you are. Right. right. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Well, Jim, thank you so much for making the time to be here. This has been um, eye-opening. Thank you so much. Always good to talk to you. Thank you. Take care. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you found this video helpful and inspirational. A Xerocos way to support this channel is to subscribe, like the video, and leave a comment. Links to the Violin Explained Etsy Music Apparel Store can be found in the description below. If you'd like to see books such as Scales and Method Books that I published, a link to my author's page on Amazon can be found in the description as well. Please share any ideas or thoughts that you'd like covered in the next videos, and thank you for your interest in music.